Level zero, you're standing waist deep in ocean water. The sand shifts beneath your toes. Sunlight filters through the waves in dancing columns of gold. Something brushes against your leg. It's just seaweed, probably. This is the intertidal zone, and honestly, it's the kiddie pool of marine nightmares. Sure, you might step on a sea urchin or get pinched by a crab, but compared to what's waiting in deeper water, this is basically a petting zoo. Jellyfish drift by like living plastic bags, their tentacles trailing poison. Most species in shallow water will give you a sting comparable to a bad sunburn. The Portuguese man-o-war, technically not a jellyfish but a colonial organism, can leave welts across your skin that burn for hours. But you'll survive. You'll complain about it on vacation and eventually forget about it. Stingrays bury themselves in the sand, waiting. Step on one, and that barbed tail whips up faster than you can process. Steve Irwin died from a stingray strike to the chest, but that was a freak accident. Most people just get a puncture wound in the foot. The cone snail sits pretty in the shallows, its shell painted in gorgeous geometric patterns. Don't pick it up. Inside that beautiful shell is a harpoon loaded with venom powerful enough to kill a human. There's no anti-venom. Here in the shallows, the ocean is still playing nice. The water is warm, the sun is shining, and most creatures are more afraid of you than you are of them. You can see the bottom. You can see what's coming. But what happens when you can't see the bottom anymore? When the reef appears and every crack could be hiding something that doesn't swim away? Level 1. 20 feet down, the coral reef erupts in color. It's beautiful, like swimming through an alien garden. The reef is a war zone disguised as paradise. Stonefish sit motionless on the reef floor, perfect mimics of encrusted rock. They're the most venomous fish in the world. Thirteen spines line their back, each loaded with neurotoxin. Step on a stonefish and the pain is immediate and apocalyptic. Victims describe it as having their foot crushed in a vice while being burned alive. People have begged doctors to amputate their foot just to make the pain stop. Lionfish patrol the reef like floating chandeliers. They're stunning, absolutely gorgeous, right up until those venomous spines pierce your skin. Native to the Indo-Pacific, lionfish have invaded the Atlantic and Caribbean, where they have no natural predators. Moray eels live in crevices, just their heads poking out, mouths opening and closing. Get your hand too close and those needle teeth will shred flesh down to bone. Morays have a second set of jaws in their throat, pharyngeal jaws that shoot forward to drag prey deeper. They're living xenomorphs. Blue-ringed octopuses are the size of a golf ball and patterned with rings that flash electric blue when they're annoyed. That blue is a warning. This tiny octopus carries enough tetrodotoxin to kill 26 adult humans in minutes. There's no anti-venom. The toxin paralyzes you completely while you remain fully conscious, unable to breathe, unable to move, unable to scream. If someone doesn't manually ventilate you, you'll suffocate while your mind stays sharp enough to understand exactly what's happening. Every gorgeous color, every elegant movement, they're all warning signs written in a language humans forgot how to read. But the reef is just the beginning. Once you drift past the continental shelf where the bottom drops away into blue nothing, you'll meet the creatures that own the open water. Level 2. A hundred feet down now, the water is colder. The light fades to dim blue twilight. The bottom has disappeared into darkness. This is where sharks own the water. Great white sharks cruise through this zone like missiles with teeth. They can smell a single drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. When they attack, they come from below, accelerating upward at 25 miles per hour, hitting you with the force of a car crash. Their jaws contain up to 300 serrated teeth arranged in multiple rows. But here's what should scare you more. Bull sharks. Bull sharks swim in both saltwater and freshwater, cruising up rivers hundreds of miles from the ocean. They've been found in the Mississippi River, the Amazon, even in a golf course pond in Australia. They have the highest testosterone levels of any animal on Earth. Bull sharks bite to kill immediately, no questions asked. Tiger sharks are the ocean's garbage disposals, eating literally anything. Scientists have found license plates, tires, and entire suits of armor in their stomachs. Barracudas hover in the midwater, their bodies like chrome javelins, their lower jaws jutting out to reveal rows of fang-like teeth. They're fast, 40 miles per hour in short bursts, and they're attracted to shiny objects, jewelry, watches, anything that flashes like fish scales will catch their attention. When they attack, it's explosive and unexpected. One moment you're swimming, the next something takes a chunk of flesh. Goliath groupers are Volkswagen-sized, mouths big enough to swallow a person whole. They generate vacuum suction when they open their mouths. Every shadow could be something coming for you. At least you can still see the shadows. But where the ocean takes you next, light becomes a memory, and the creatures there have evolved into shapes that nightmare themselves into existence. Level 3. Deeper than 3,300 feet, the sun gives up entirely. The midnight zone. Eternal darkness. 
The pressure here would crush a human instantly. Over 5,800 pounds per square inch. Nothing human belongs here. But life doesn't care what belongs. Giant squid drift through this darkness, their bodies reaching lengths of 43 feet, their eyes the size of dinner plates, the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. The squid's eight arms are lined with hundreds of suckers, each sucker ringed with serrated chitin like a circular saw. Their two feeding tentacles are longer, equipped with clubs covered in sharp hooks. For centuries, giant squid were mythical creatures, the kraken of sailor stories. We have videos of them now, footage of them hunting in the deep sea. But the giant squid isn't even the biggest squid down here. The colossal squid is heavier, bulkier, with hooks on its tentacles that can rotate 360 degrees. We've only seen a handful of specimens. We don't know how many exist, how they hunt, or how intelligent they are. Fangtooth fish have teeth so large they can't fully close their mouths. They need special sockets in their skull to keep from piercing their own brain. Viperfish sport fangs like transparent needles, so long they curve back toward their eyes. They use bioluminescent lures to attract prey in the darkness. When something investigates, the viperfish strikes faster than the human eye can follow. Gulper eels are almost all mouth, jaws unhinged to grotesque proportions. Anglerfish are the most famous monsters of the deep. Females are football-sized horrors with a bioluminescent lure. Males are tiny things that fuse with the female's body, becoming a parasitic sperm sac. Everything here glows. The darkness isn't empty. It's full of stars, except the stars are alive and some of them want to eat you. But these creatures still hunt in the water column, drifting through three-dimensional space. The real nightmare waits at the bottom, where the pressure crushes everything and life exists in forms that shouldn't be possible. Level 4. Imagine landing on an alien planet, flat, featureless, covered in sediment, undisturbed for millennia. Darkness absolute. Pressure equivalent to 50 jumbo jets stacked on your body. Welcome to the abyssal plane, covering more than 50% of the planet's surface. Sea spiders the size of dinner plates walk on legs like chopsticks. Their guts extend into their legs. Giant isopods grow up to 16 inches long, weighing 4 pounds. They survive years without eating, waiting for the next corpse. Tripod fish stand on three fin rays. They're hermaphrodites because finding a mate in the abyss is so difficult that evolution decided it was easier to reproduce on their own. Grenadiers might be the most abundant vertebrates on Earth by biomass, but the real horror is the feeding frenzies. When a whale dies and sinks, every scavenger converges. Hagfish burrow inside and eat it from within. Hundreds, sometimes thousands, filling the whale until it's skeleton and slime. Sleeper sharks glide like ghosts. Pacific sleeper sharks reach 23 feet and live over 270 years. They're so lethargic that parasites blind them, and they don't bother to shake them off. The abyss is patient. Eventually, everything falls. But you think the abyssal plain is the deepest hell the ocean can offer? There are cracks in the Earth's crust that go miles deeper, where pressure becomes so extreme that the laws of chemistry start bending. Level 5. Below 20,000 feet, you enter the Hadal Zone, named after Hades. Deeper than Mount Everest is tall. The Mariana Trench's deepest point, Challenger Deep, is 36,070 feet below the surface. Pressure, 16,000 pounds per square inch. Your body would cease to exist. Yet we've found life. Snailfish live at depths exceeding 26,000 feet, deeper than any other fish. Amphipods swarm the trenches, some 13 inches long. We've retrieved bait canisters covered in thousands of amphipods feeding in frenzies. And then there's life around hydrothermal vents. Superheated water, sometimes exceeding 700 degrees Fahrenheit, erupts into the freezing ocean, loaded with hydrogen sulfide, methane, iron, manganese. Should be toxic. Should be sterile. Instead, it's an oasis. Giant tube worms extend up to 8 feet long. No mouth, no digestive system. They farm bacteria inside their own bodies. Yeti crabs farm bacteria on their hairy claws and eat them. Vent octopuses guard eggs for years, not eating slowly starving to death, protecting the next generation. The HODL zone is as close to another planet as you can get while staying on Earth. But there's something stranger than individual creatures lurking in the deep. There are gatherings, massive swarms that appear without warning, and create light shows visible for miles. Level 6. Picture this. You're in a submersible, descending through darkness, when suddenly the water around you explodes into light. From the water itself, millions of creatures, all bioluminescent, all flashing at once in a synchronized display that looks like an underwater aurora. Siphonophores grow to lengths exceeding 150 feet, potentially the longest animals on Earth. Each is actually thousands of individual zooids working together. They're a floating civilization. Pyrosomes form hollow tubes you could swim through. 
Touch one and it lights up like biological fiber optics. They grow to 15 feet long or more. Salps chain together in massive colonies stretching for miles. When they die, they sink rapidly, acting as a biological carbon pump. These swarms can appear suddenly and disappear just as fast. In World War II, submarines used bioluminescent swarms for cover, and we don't know what triggers these gatherings. The ocean keeps its secret. Beauty and danger are partners in the ocean, and where swarms of small creatures gather, something bigger always follows. Something that makes every creature you've met so far look like practice for the real nightmare. Level 7. The deep ocean has bigger things, things we've only seen in pieces. Sperm whales dive to depths exceeding 7,000 feet, holding their breath for up to 90 minutes, hunting in absolute darkness using echolocation so powerful it can stun prey. These clicks are over 230 decibels underwater. That's louder than a rocket launch. The whales use these clicks to hunt giant squid, and the battles are legendary. We know these fights happen because sperm whales surface bearing circular scars from giant squid suckers, some of the scars 18 inches in diameter, suggesting squid far larger than any we've captured. But what if there are bigger squid? ones that fight back more effectively. In 1998, researchers in California recorded a sound called the bloop. It matched the frequency pattern of biological sounds but was far louder than any whale call ever recorded. The official explanation? An ice quake, ice calving from Antarctic glaciers. But there's no way to be certain. The megamouth shark discovered in 1976 grows to 18 feet long, glows in the dark. We've seen about 100 specimens since discovery. We missed it until the 1970s. What else is down there that we haven't found? We've explored less than 5% of the ocean. Marine biologists estimate we've identified maybe 10% of marine species. You've seen the giants with teeth and tentacles, but they're not what kills the most humans. The deadliest things in the ocean are the ones you can't see at all. Level 8. You can't see them, you can't hear them, you can't fight them, and they kill more people every year than sharks, jellyfish, and octopuses combined. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, Vibrio vulnificus can kill you in 48 hours. It causes flesh-eating disease. Your skin turns black, your tissue dies. Mortality rate, 50%. Naglaria fowleri, the brain-eating amoeba, enters through your nose, consumes your brain tissue. Fatality rate, 97%. By the time symptoms appear, you're already dying. Box jellyfish venom is so potent, victims drown in minutes. Pain is described as being branded with hot irons over your entire body. Tentacles are nearly invisible. Irukandji jellyfish are thumbnail-sized, transparent. 30 minutes after being stung, victims develop excruciating muscle cramps and an impending sense of doom so powerful they beg to die. Pain lasts days or weeks. Simothoa exigua, the tongue-eating louse, enters through gills, drains the tongue of blood until it falls off. Then it attaches to the stub and functions as the fish's new tongue. The parasite replaces an entire organ. Schistosomes penetrate human skin, settle in blood vessels, lay eggs. Hundreds of millions of people worldwide are infected. The ocean doesn't need fangs to kill you. It doesn't need size. It just needs chemistry. But microscopic terrors are just the baseline. Because there's something worse than what we've found in the ocean. It's what we've almost seen. What leaves evidence but never reveals itself. Level 9. This level deals with documented encounters that scientists cannot fully explain. Not speculation, but recorded events. In 1977, researchers exploring the Mariana Trench detected something massive on sonar. Returns suggested something at least twice the size of a blue whale. They never got visual confirmation. The data exists in research archives unexplained. In 2014, a fisherman off South Africa caught a great white shark bitten clean in half by something with a bite radius over eight feet. The shark was 16 feet long, weighing 2,000 pounds. The bite pattern didn't match any known predator. In 2020, deep sea cameras captured something moving past at high speed. Researchers estimated the object was at least 30 feet long. Multiple marine biologists couldn't identify the species. These are the unknowns, the things we've almost seen. We've sent 12 people to the moon. Only three people have been to the deepest part of the ocean. We have better maps of Mars than our own ocean floor. If you drained all ocean water and piled it on the United States, it would cover the entire country in a layer 60 miles deep. Somewhere in that water, there are creatures we've never seen. Scientists have documented these mysteries, recorded these encounters, published these findings, but the documentation isn't understandable. And beyond what we've documented, there's what scientists theorize could exist. Mathematical possibilities that push biology to its absolute limits. Level 10. This is the realm of scientific speculation, where marine biologists discuss possibilities based on mathematical models and evolutionary theory. These aren't confirmed creatures. They're hypotheses built on solid science. 
Could there be Megalodon descendants still alive? Officially, Autodus Megalodon went extinct 3.6 million years ago, reached lengths of 60 feet or more. We find only teeth because shark skeletons are cartilage. Most marine biologists consider Megalodon's survival highly unlikely, but species we thought extinct have been rediscovered. The coelacanth, the Laotian rock rat. If a population adapted to deep water hunting, they could theoretically survive undetected. Could there be giant octopuses far larger than documented? The largest confirmed was 30 feet across, but in 1998, Japanese researchers filmed an octopus with a radial spread estimated at 42 feet. The video exists in research archives. Deep sea gigantism is a documented phenomenon. An octopus twice the size of anything we've caught could theoretically exist. Could there be undiscovered whale species? Omura's whale wasn't confirmed until 2003. Marine mammalogists estimate there are likely several beaked whale species we haven't identified yet. In the 1960s, Soviet researchers recorded sounds from the deep ocean that resembled mechanical noises. When released, marine acoustic specialists couldn't explain them. Some scientists theorized bioluminescent communication creating electromagnetic pulses. Others suggested unknown seismic activity. No consensus exists. Every year we discover between 1,500 and 2,000 new marine species. In 2005, scientists discovered fish with antifreeze proteins no one predicted. In 2012, researchers found bacteria dividing once every 10,000 years. Scientists speculate that somewhere in the unexplored 95% of the ocean, there might be something that would redefine our understanding of biology. The giant squid was a myth until we photographed one in 2004. The megamouth shark was unknown until 1976. Hydrothermal vents weren't discovered until 1977. The yeti crab wasn't found until 2005. The colossal squid wasn't confirmed until 2007. These discoveries happened in our lifetime. And maybe that's the most terrifying truth of all. Not what we've found. Not the teeth, the venom, the size, the pressure, the darkness. It's certain that there's more. More creatures swimming through water we'll never explore. More species living in trenches we'll never reach. Somewhere down there right now, something is moving through the dark. Something we've never seen. Something that might be bigger, stranger, or more terrifying than anything on this list. And it has no idea we exist. The ocean keeps its deepest secrets hidden. It always has. It always will. We've cataloged the monsters we can reach. But the ones we can't? They're still down there. Waiting.